if you are like here and if you want to be a web dev to become a mobile developer there is actually a better and a faster way to do that and that is to just learn hey everyone welcome back and in this video let's just discuss if web apps are actually killing mobile applications should you be choosing mobile application development as a career or web dev let's just find out in this video what's going on in today's time if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow this video is a part of Codam's t-shirt giveaway program for the month. If you want to take part and win an amazing Codam t-shirt, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it, you are eligible. If your comment gets a heart from Codam, you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free. All right, let's talk a bit about mobile and web applications and what do they all mean? Let's start with web apps. So essentially when I'm talking about apps here, I'm referring to apps running on mobile phones, Android and iOS. So a typical web app, basically when we say web apps, I'm gonna be talking about Ionic mostly. I'm gonna be talking about React Native, kind of the web-based technologies, right? So let's discuss about them one by one. The first one where pretty much all you have is web browser embedded as an application right so this is a web browser which is running as an app so i mean you pretty much can code in html css javascript your usual tech stack the web so that's a huge pro that means now web developers can not only just build applications for the web but also build it for the mobile using the same tech stack without worrying about any other technology this is the pro the con obviously is in terms of performance i mean no matter how anyone says web apps are becoming good or phones are improving performance i don't think anytime soon we can run a great 3d game for example at 60 fps on a native iPhone 13 or 14 or whatever comes right because of browsers like Safari now the reason I say that is because the browser which is running here at least on iPhone it has to run on WebKit which is used by Safari as well and this is like I mean this has bad support for a lot of modern APIs in JavaScript right so that is one concern second concern is that usually the native API support here is also good but again it might be limiting or it might be hard or you would have to anyway look for ways to patch in your way to a native api right so for example for ionic at least capacitor provides that bridge of connecting your js world with the native world it's fine but it's inconvenient because you know sometimes you might have a new native api which might not be supported some api might not be working in a way you want it it's the platform support is not there right this is a third party support more or less your integration with javascript with capacitor is a third party support so powered by ionic i'm not saying ionic is a bad company but it's just that it's not apple or google as a matter of fact which will consider the availability of a native api much more seriously compared to a third party player similarly if we talk about react native as well i mean things change a very little in this context because react native allows you to write javascript which runs over a bridge, I mean, which is also changing a little bit. So your JS world is this, your mobile world is this, and this runs over a bridge, which converts your code, you know, not exactly converts, but pens your JS payload to be executed as native code, right? So even in React Native, a lot of calls are optimized to run once across the bridge, directly run on the native side, but there might be some code which might require a lot of to and fro from the bridge. And this has an additional performance cost, right? So this is what we talked about Ionic and React Native. There is another way you can build applications on the web, which is called as progressive web applications, which pretty much are powered web apps, right? So PWAs have a lot more functionality access compared to just a regular app, but they still have that standard HTML, CSS, JavaScript work they need to do. Now, the only problem here is that this is absolutely a disaster on iOS because Safari, like we discussed here, kind of is super bad in supporting a lot of native app APIs, right? So Safari makes it extremely hard for developers to build any sort of good progressive web application, which can also be a good a native level app for 
your mobile phones. On the other hand, when you have native applications running on the system, I mean, this is basically the best case if you can arrange that. If you have, let's say, Kotlin or Android and Objective-C or, you know, Swift, Swift UI on iOS. That's the best case scenario because they have first class support from their parent companies, that is Google and Apple, and they pretty much would have, I mean, obviously access to all the internal APIs as well, whatever you want to access. Both of these languages are compiled. They are high speed, high performant, and pretty much gives you complete control, right? So what's my suggestion? My suggestion for you is if you are already a web developer, there is no harm going for Ionic, React Native, or even PWS Ace if you want to dive a little bit into mobile world. But if you are not a web developer and you're trying to learn web development for building mobile apps, that's pretty bad, I would say. Like, that doesn't make sense because if you are not a web developer and if you don't intend to become one, but you want to become a mobile developer, then don't go via web app if you have if you're like here and if you want to be a web dev to become a mobile developer there is actually a better and a faster way to do that and that is to just learn the native technology don't go like this only go like this if you're already here right if you already know web development basics and if you want to try out mobile then this route is a bit faster right but if you're here then obviously just take kotlin or swift with you Again, a lot of factors are involved here. For example, the cost of production is obviously higher here because you have to hire two types of developers or two types of teams to develop for both the platforms. The model here is a bit lucrative because you know you get one app for both the platforms from a single code base. But yeah, I mean, anything custom or anything high performant if you're going for, then obviously that could not, I mean, it's not feasible to do on these platforms, these hybrid or React Native or even PWSAs, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about web development and mobile application development? What do you think is the future? And what are you working on right now? So that is all for this one. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon.